you must have had blood test at some point in your life once the blood is collected in a test tube it is sent to the centrifugation machine this machine spins at high speed thereby separating fluids of different densities the less dense liquid settles on top while the heavier substance and elements of blood settles at the bottom after centrifugation three different distinct layers are formed you can see yellow viscous layer in the bottom you can see dark red layer the yellow viscous layer contains platelets and plasma protein middle layer consists of wbc and the bottom layer consists of rbc the process of formation of blood cells is known as erythropoiesis but where is blood formed in fetal life liver and spleen are the primary sites for erythropoiesis after birth erythropoiesis occurs in the red bone marrow of long bones red blood cells are known as erythrocytes and there are approximately 250 millions of them an erythrocyte is bi concave shaped and having length of 7.5 micrometer thickness of 2.5 micrometer and the layer is made up of plasma membrane which have a, a glutenogen a glutenogen is a protein that acts as a antigen if your rbc has antigen a then your blood belongs to blood group a if your blood group has a different type of antigen that is antigen b then the blood belongs to the blood group b similarly in blood group ab both the antigens that is a and b are present exception is blood group o where no such a and b antigen are present on the surface of rbc person who has blood group a will make antibody against blood group b similarly blood group b will make antibody against blood group a blood group ab will make no antibody and blood group o will make antibodies against blood group a and blood group b is it too difficult to understand let me make it easy for you blood group a have special type of protein known as a glutenogen which is known as antigen a if your rbc have antigen a then your blood belongs to blood group a similarly if your rbc has antigen b then your blood belongs to blood group b similarly if your rbc has both the antigen a and b present then your blood belongs to blood group ab and if your rbc does not have any such antigen a and b then your blood belongs to blood group o now let's come to antigen antigen is a substance that has capacity to produce immune reaction but in your own body your body does not produce antibody against your own antigen if you have blood group a that means you have a antigen but your body will not produce antibodies against this antigen but somehow if your body made antibodies against this a antigen that is if your body produced antibody a then it would lead to clumping of your rbc and it could also lead to hemolysis hence we can say that blood group a will produce antibody b this is the reason during blood transfusion if the person belongs to blood group a he can be transfused with only blood group a but if we give blood group b to person belonging to blood group a person belonging to blood group a will produce antibodies against the b antigen of blood group b which will produce antigen antibody reaction causing rbc to clump up and may cause hemolysis hence blood group a will make antibodies against blood group b blood group b will make antibodies against blood group a blood group ab will not make any antibodies because it already has a and b antigen in its own rbc rbc of blood group o does not have antigen a and b and that's why blood group o will produce antibodies against blood group a and blood group b 
through this we can understand blood transfusion more easily blood group a can give blood to blood group a and blood group ab blood group b can give blood to person belonging to blood group b and ab blood group ab can only give blood to the person who has the same blood group as them blood group o can donate to all the groups the person who has blood group ab does not produce antibody against antigen a and antigen b and thus can receive blood from all the blood groups blood group o does not have any antigen on its rbc surface hence the person belonging to blood group o can give blood to a b ab and o they are known as universal donor now you must have heard some blood group have positive and negative assigned to them for example a positive blood group and a negative blood group your rbc may have another kind of antigen present on its surface known as rh antigen if your rbc has rh antigen then your blood is rh positive if it has no rh antigen then your blood is rh negative if blood group a has rh antigen then it is a positive and if it has no rh antigen then it is a negative similarly if blood group b has rh antigen then it is b positive and if it has no rh antigen then it is b negative if blood group ab has rh antigen then it is ab positive and if it has no rh antigen then it is ab negative similarly with blood group o if it has rh antigen it is o positive and no rh antigen it is o negative we can summarize the blood grouping with the help of a chart please watch till the end of the video to gain more insight on blood grouping in this column you can see which blood group can donate to which blood group blood group ab is universal recipient blood group o is universal donor you must remember that rh negative person cannot receive blood from rh positive person because the person that has rh antigen will not produce antibody against this rh factor but the person who has rh negative blood will produce antibodies against the rh antigen 